All right, let's talk about vapor injection and vapor injected compressors. Uh, this is something that a lot of people have asked about, and I don't know why it took me so long to make this video because I have a 3D video to show you. Uh, vapor injected compressors are designed to operate under specific conditions that allow us to actually load up scroll plates when outdoor ambient conditions are extremely low. Think of it as like a hot gas bypass, but instead of sending it back to the suction line where it goes to the compression process, we actually can hijack the uh, scroll plates there and load them up with as much vapor halfway through the compression process. What does this do? Well, this is important when we talk about high compression ratios. When your suction pressure is 40 PSI and your head pressure is 320 and we're trying to maintain a constant, uh, constant heat, discharge heat, right, out of the compressor for heating mode at negative 15 degrees outside. Well, how do we fix that? Well, we do that by adding and injecting vapor into the middle of the compressor scroll plate set uh, to actually allow us to compress a larger volume of actual refrigerant to jack that head pressure up to get that discharge temps that we need in low ambient conditions. Well, how does it do it? I'll just play the video for you. I mean, really, I could just send you the video and then you'd be, you'd be good. So, you know, normal refrigeration process, very boring. Nobody cares. Come on now. This is what we're looking at. Okay, indoor, outdoor, right? You've got your outdoor heat exchanger. You've got your indoor heat exchanger. This is obviously in heat mode here. And so what we're doing is, is we're taking uh, right here this expansion valve and we're injecting vapor back over into our compressor. Now, this is a little confusing because this isn't actually how it happens, but it's a very, very, very dumbed down version of uh, what is taking place within that compressor. So let's just keep this video a rolling. Uh, but this is what we're doing. We're just taking it and we're injecting it. So this is a normal compression process. Notice here, oh, here we go side by side. Let me reduce myself down here. And we're going to add an injection tube. So if you look here on the left and the right, shrink my big old head down here. On the left-hand side, this is your average scroll plate. This is your average refrigerant circuit uh, that's just going, taking your suction gas in here, right? We're coming suction gas in. We're going around the actual scroll plate for compression, uh, around and around and around she goes and out the center. So what's happening here is because our, our, our suction pressure is low, let's say 40 PSI or even a Let's talk about saturation. Ooh, talk about that saturation temperature, boy. Come on now. Saturation temperature of negative 15, because that's probably what it's close to. And I'm not looking at any PT charts here, nor do I have them memorized. So uh, it's extremely low, right? It's in the negatives for saturation temperature. Low pressure coming into our suction. And so what do we know about low suction pressure? Well, low suction pressure tells us that there's a lack of volume of refrigerant in that suction line. Well, when you go through this compression process, which is normally used to a large amount of volume of refrigerant to compress... Um, there's a lot of extra wasted space, and you can kind of see it here on the outside scroll plate, right? It's not even that hot. The pressure's not that high because, remember, it's increasing the pressure. But if the volume's not there, the pressure doesn't get very high. It doesn't get much higher than what it already is. So what do we do, and how do we fix that? We add an injection tube here that you see here on the right-hand side. And so what are we doing? We're taking this light grayish blue gas, which is probably, let's say, let's say we've doubled the pressure. This is 80 PSI. And what we're going to do now is we're going to take 200 PSI and we're going to dump it into what we consider the intermediate phase of co co the compression process. And so instead of dumping 80 PSI through the rest of the scroll set and running that 80 PSI through this, this, this whirly loop-de-loop here in the scroll set, we're going to take 200 PSI, 210, 215 based upon the manufacturer, and we're going to dump it into that low pressure side, right, because it's still low pressure, 80 PSI is low, come on. Um, and we're going to jack that pressure. We're going to fill it up, fill that void up, fill those cavities up uh, with with vapor, right? Not only just any vapor, but high pressure vapor. So what happens then? So when it makes it to that next compression process phase here, as you can see, right? Instead of it getting to maybe 200 PSI, 200 PSI, really low. Come on, that's not a good discharge pressure at all. No. Instead, we're 200 here. So when we hit here, guess what? We at 350, baby. We're cooking with gas. Oh, I can't even draw on the screen because it cuts it off for some reason. 350. We are cooking. So by the time it makes it to the center inlet here, right, we are discharging 400, 420 PSIG, right, which right calculated over to about 100, 115 uh, saturation temperature, discharge temperature. That's what we're looking for. We're looking for some hot gas in heating, right? We want to heat not cool, instead of having a wimpy little, you know, oh, 300 PSI, uh, you know, 85 degree discharge saturation temperature. It's really, it's not, it's not good at all. That's like 130 degree discharge temps. By the time it makes it inside, it's like 110. And that's just like 
this that's this is me right here this is me giving you a hundred degree air <sighs> that's probably what it feels like coming out of out of this system here on this side as opposed to over here which is basically like a giant blow dryer uh, blowing heat into the space that's the purpose of vapor injected compressors now hold up stop hammer time no I'm just kidding um <laughs> We're going to stop here because you're going to see a lot of manufacturers. Shame on you, salespeople. Yeah, you know who I'm talking about. You're going to tell me and you're going to label this technology as liquid injected, liquid injection. There is no such thing as a, okay, I'm not going to say no such thing because there is a few out there. For scroll compressors and VRF, we do not inject liquid into the scroll set. That is a misnomer. You're going to find that all the good names were taken by other marketing teams, and so we had nothing left to call it but liquid injection. These are not liquid-injected compressors. I don't care what the other manufacturer said. I almost slipped and said the name of the manufacturer because I had it out with them recently about it. They are not liquid-injected. You do not inject liquid in the compression process because if you check out my other video that I made of the LG compressor we tore down, it disintegrates the scroll plates, and they don't want to do that. It's vapor injected. It has always been vapor injected. It will always be vapor injected. Scroll compressors can only compress vapor, right? So if, I don't care what the brochure says. I don't care what their fancy website with the cool graphics and the cool tones and the sounds and the warm colors that make you feel all nice and fuzzy inside. It is boo hockey and is not true. It is vapor injected compressors uh, regardless of what they say. And that's what we're doing here. And we're not vapor injecting with 500 PSI, right? This isn't CO2, guys. Come on. This is, we're just intermediate gas. 200 PSI is what we're looking for. What does this do? This allows us to, well, let's just look. Where you would normally see this compressor on this side is actually running at a higher rate of speed. We're actually able to discharge higher pressure and higher temperature at lower speeds, right? So this also results in energy efficiency. Not only does it allow for us to maintain heating capacity uh, to the indoor system, but it also allows us to actually load up the scroll plates to where not that much power is needed, right? Work, compressor work, all those buzzwords. Man, uh, doesn't, it's not required. It doesn't need it because again, we're loading up the scroll plate and we're achieving the same thing. We're getting a higher discharge pressure, a higher discharge temperature at a lower speed. It's less it's less juice squeezing, if you will, right? Is the juice worth the squeeze? And yes, the answer is that the juice is worth the squeeze. Oh, let's go look at the technology. Technology is so cool. All right, so this is the vapor injection line. And you, you're going to get a lot of guys who go through the data sets and they're like, okay, all right, all right, all right, all right, all right, right here, it's right here, look. This is it. This is it right here. See this vapor injection line? It's having a liquid refrigerant come back out of the compressor. It's going, whoa, 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 stop. There's a check valve here. And the check valve is to make sure that when the discharge pressure or when the pressure within the compressor is at a high enough state where vapor injection should not take place, it does not allow it to go the opposite direction. So let's watch how this works, right? When this line is not a vapor injected line and it's a low pressure line, it's a vapor pressure, right? Vapor, this is low pressure, suction line, right? Whoa, 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 this is a suction line? No, 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 no. This is a vapor injection line. When we just set it, it's got a little thing here. Look at the thing. The thing says vapor, this is ejection valve. So this is this is also an injection line. Um, no, I hate the burst bubble, but, you know, VRF, we like to make things super duper complicated. Uh, let's just look at that really quickly. <laughs> oh, you guys are beating your head against the wall. All right. Subcooling EEV. Check. Know it. Love it. Live it. Breathe it. Vapor comes out. Let's change our colors here because I'm going to throw you all. All right. So we get, oh, here we go. Sorry. I'm already messing you up. Liquid comes in. Do, 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 do. It's having a good time. It says, welcome to the party. Okay. Low pressure saturated vapor comes out, goes through. Then it turns into 100% vapor because I don't have light blue. You're going to have to deal with purple. Okay. That vapor comes out. And where does it go? It goes do, 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 do. Boom. Okay. Well, it goes here. Because this is connected. Nice little muffler there. But it doesn't go into the compressor because this is a low pressure. Low pressure, right? There's a low pressure line. And we just saw the check valve. Check valve won't open up unless there's a high pressure uh, on the other side. So it doesn't go anywhere. So where does it go instead? Well, when it comes out of the subcooler, it goes down and it goes over and it comes across. And oh, look, 
this is where it goes. This is where it belongs. This is home. Home is here. Home is back into the suction line. So there you go. It, it's no different. Here we go. Suction, suction line connected, dumping vapor back into our suction line. That's the normal subcooling circuit on any VRF piece of equipment. Here's where it gets wild. This subcooling EEV only has two positions, although it is a 2000 pulse valve and maybe many people will argue that they've seen other pulses. I'm sorry to tell you, but it's a two pulse valve. 700 pulses is what you're going to normally see it at, and then it might jump up to 1600 pulses. Now, again, this is just opening and making a connection between here and here. This EEV is not metering refrigerant. This EEV is just a soft open, soft close two position valve. I know. I don't ask me why. It is. The data says it. I don't want to have to prove it to you. This video could get a lot longer. <laughs> so what happens when vapor injection is activated? Activate. Wonder Twins. Unite. Right? Sparks fly. This goes to what? Zero pulses. And it completely closes. And it goes, nah, -uh, not today. So what happens? No more suction gas comes through. So what happens? Well, guess what? This cool vapor cool runnings here comes across comes over and it says i got nowhere to go uh pff, what am i gonna do i guess i just won't go anywhere well guess what it is 400 psi on this side of the expansion valve so guess what it's still sending refrigerant through so what happens well this refrigerant not going anywhere is a vapor what happens to it it starts to build pressure and it goes higher. It goes from 100, right, 100 PSI to 120 PSI. I can't draw numbers with this. 150 PSI, the pressure is building. 180 PSI, it's getting so high. And then it hits 200 PSI. Oh, no, 215. It hits 215 PSI. And what happens? Oh, well, the pressure has hit the point of no return. And it pushes the check valve open on the compressor. This is closed. This builds pressure on the line. And then it feeds into the compressor. This is how the vapor injection circuit works on VRVX, right? This is how the vapor injection circuit works on a lot of VRF equipment. Some have dedicated lines that just take only hot gas and dump it right in the compressor. But I don't want hot gas. I just want high pressure vapor. I don't want to add a bunch of heat to the compressor. I don't want to do that. That's not a, that's not a good idea. I don't want to short cycle. And you know, I, there's not. I, I step back here. I could have put a solenoid valve here and closed it and just said, dump the hot gas over into the compressor and let's recirculate. That defeats the purpose. We're trying to generate heat for the indoor units. Short cycling it or bypassing it right here does nothing for me. I need it to go inside. I need heat to go inside, not into my compressor. So the only sensible thing that makes sense is to turn it to a vapor, build the pressure, right? And this, this line isn't that hot. We were literally taking 55 degree vapor and we're trying to turn it into high pressure state. So it's actually like a semi-cool vapor refrigerant at a medium temperature. Inter intermediate pressure is the word I like to use. Intermediate pressure refrigerant back into the compressor. That is how vapor injection works on the VRVX compressor. Again, when that valve is closed, vapor injection is taking place. When that valve is open, it is normal vapor refrigerant, right, dumping back into the suction line. There you go. 13-minute video on what is a vapor-injected compressor, what does it do, how does it work, what does the circuit even look like, what, are, as, what has everybody been lying to you about recently, right? It's not liquid injection, it's vapor injection. And the purpose of this, and the only time that actually takes place is in low ambient conditions, right? In, in conditions where you actually need, uh, you know, more vapor, load up the scrolls, right? And that is typically high compression ratio. High compression ratio in the system, right, gets resolved by using vapor injection and vapor injected compressors. And the Amerian has this system too, has the same technology, has the same circuits, does the same gosh darn thing. So there you go. Vapor injected compressor in 14 minutes. You're welcome.